Hello, this is Edith Neumeyer, and I'm the author of the book The Mystery of Adam. <laughs> I think I've been starting this video now as probably the fourth time. I had it on my YouTube, so I'm really uh, sorry for some of you who have watched the other uh, video and that I took off accidentally I took it off accidentally and then when I wanted to put it back on I'm thinking wait a minute I really need to do this over again because maybe I need to clarify it even better okay maybe make it even better and usually don't do that I usually let the Holy Spirit guide me and yeah the Holy Spirit guided me through doing the first video and then the German video and he taught me more in the German video and so I'm thinking, well, I need to bring this in this video as well. So here it is, one more time, a new video. So if you've seen the other one, well, this is an update and edited version of the other one that I did. So it's not the same, okay? So I'm talking, I'm going to talk about Jacob's Trouble today. There's a lot of books written about Jacob's Trouble and I don't know if people actually have done the studies I don't know. I'm, I'm not going to read any books about Jacob's trouble. I'm not interested in what other people believe about Jacob's trouble or their opinion or anything. What I want is do investigative studies about Jacob's trouble. That's what I want to do. Not somebody's opinion, interpretation or whatever. And I don't care if it's a rabbi. Rabbis, Judy, uh, Judy, uh, rabbis from Judaism do not have the Holy Spirit. They don't know how to actually even uh, understand uh, what, for instance, okay, and this is only in Jeremiah 30 is saying. They don't. They don't even know. They, they, they ignore totally the prophets and what the prophets are saying. And that's why they miss, miss, miss Messiah. So I don't really, I'm not too much interested in what rabbis say about Jacob's trouble. Of course, Jacob's trouble, you can only find the word Jacob's trouble, okay? Which is hard because you can only find it in the King James, okay? Or at least that's why I found it, King James. NIV, it doesn't talk about Jacob's trouble, okay? Only in the King James is it translated Jacob's trouble, okay? Trouble of Jacob. Now, there's other troubles mentioned in Jeremiah, for instance, Jeremiah 19, but that is not the same event. And I'm ex going to explain that today. Again, I am against interpreting Bible. I need to look for historical accounts and accounts in the Bible to put in this event that Jeremiah 30 is talking about. Where does it fit? Okay, where does it fit? Who is the target of it? Jacob's trouble. Obviously, it's the descendants of Jacob. But even the descendants of Jacob are all believers too. They are counted under Jacob's children. All believers, not just biological descendants. That is very obvious if you study um, the genealogy of Abraham, Isaac, uh, and then Jacob. Okay, if you study that and who was chosen by God to be the descendant of Abraham, you will find out very easily it's always the believing person, only the person that believes, not necessarily because you are biological descendant. Okay, we know that from Isaac, only Isaac, not Ishmael or the other kids are descendants or counted as spiritual descendants of, and here's the word, spiritual, spiritual descendants. Because a lot of people, uh, the Arab nations are descendants of Abraham biologically, but that's not what's counting. It counts spiritual descendants. That's what counts, okay? So, but obviously here in Jeremiah, um, Jeremiah had the biological descendants, of course, in mind as well. He didn't think about spiritual descendants. He thought about biological descendants. And so this is what we're going to work with. So therefore, I'm assuming, okay, I'm going to see assuming, which you can't do, okay? Because again, I believe these descendants also include 
Gentile believers that believe in the God of Jacob. Okay? So that too. So it's not just an assuming. It's what the Bible teaches. So it's all believers in Jacob that are left over during this time period that here Jeremiah 30 described. It's a troubled time. That's why it's called Jacob's, Jacob's trouble. It's a horrific, terrible time. Okay? So we're going to sort through it and find out when this time period will be. Okay? When will this time period be? Because, see, many mix up this Jacob's trouble with the Great Tribulation. Okay? Great Tribulation. And then, of course, I have done lots of videos about Great Tribulation, the Great Tribulation, which is not in accordance with dispensationalism. Okay? I do not believe in a seven-year or even a three-and-a-half-year of tribulation. That is dispensationalism. Okay? That is a time um, of distress. Many believe during the wrath of God. So, when the sun goes dark, but see, when the sun goes dark, Jesus said in Matthew 24, not 29, the tribulation is already over. Okay? The tribulation ends when the sun goes dark. And when the sun goes dark, that is when, according to Joel, is when the wrath of God starts. It will be a horrible day. Okay? Even Joel speaks about this being a horrible day. Read Joel. I think it's Joel 2, where you can find it, that the day of the Lord um, or when the sun goes dark is a horrible day. Now, we know that the day of the Lord is a thousand years. So the whole thousand years is not horrible. But the first period is horrible because he will destroy his enemies. So we have to understand this time period. And I have discussed that in the other videos that I have done. Specifically, that the human human uh, history will end with 6,000 years. That is the time of the Gentiles will be finished. Um, Luke 21-24. That overlaps with this period of time of the tribulation that Jesus was saying, when the tribulation is finished, that's when the sun goes dark in Matthew 24, 29. This is a whole time period of where the saints go through tribulation. And then in, um, in, in Revelation 7, the great multitude that is in heaven, which are the saints, went through great tribulation time. So we know that all saints went through great tribulation time until the day of the Lord or the wrath of God starts. I hope you can see that very clearly in this timeline. Make it as a picture. Okay. So here we have um, when the time of the Gentiles is finished. And the time of the Gentiles already goes back to the time of Jesus. That's the time of Gentiles. Okay? That's 2,000 years and it finishes right there when the sun goes dark. When the sun goes dark, the day of the Lord starts, but first the, the wrath of God starts. I don't know how many years, maybe four years, the wrath of God starts. Then Jesus has destroyed or his angels have destroyed, Michael has destroyed the enemies of God. And then Jesus and his bride can start to rule. So see it in that way, okay? See it as that of a picture so you have an idea where we can put now Jeremiah 30 and why we put Jeremiah 30 there. Jeremiah is not 30 is not before um during this time of tribulation. Jeremiah 30 is during a time of God's wrath, okay, they will be hit with God's wrath because they didn't listen. They did not listen before, 
okay? Now, you know that I believe just before the wrath of God, Jesus will take out his bride, okay? I cannot use the word rapture, but that's what it is, okay? That's just the word I'm using. It's called the rapture, okay? That's when Jesus takes out his bride. So when the, the, all the people that are left over, remember the 10 virgins in Matthew 24? They go through, the foolish ones will go through the wrath of God because they were left behind, okay? So that's when the wrath starts, when Jesus returns for the wise virgins and the foolish ones are left behind. So when the foolish virgins are left behind and the wise ones are taken out, that's all I can explain it to you, okay? That's when the wrath of God starts. That's when horrible things will start and these foolish virgins will have to go through the wrath of God. And that is the time of Jacob's trouble. Not the tribulation that is before the, when the sun goes dark and all saints go through this tribulation. That's where the confusion happens. And with most people, the confusion happens exactly there, okay? So everything before Matthew 24, 29 is not, has nothing to do with Jacob's trouble. Nothing, because Jacob's trouble is clearly the wrath of God. What Joel is talking about, the sun going dark, this horrible day, okay, and also what Zechariah is talking about in Zechariah 14. And I'm not going there. You can read it for yourself. Okay. Again, a horrible time for Israel, a horrible time for uh, the Jews, a horrible time for Jerusalem. Read it. And so now we are starting with, um, we're going to look at Jeremiah 30 to see what's going on there. Thus speaketh the Lord God of Israel, saying, Write thee, thee all the words that I have spoken into thee in a book. And I hate to read um, um, King James. For lo, the days come, says the Lord, that I will bring again the captivity of my people Israel and Judah, said the Lord, and I will cause them to return to the land that I gave to their fathers, and they shall possess it, possess it, okay? I mean, really possess it, okay? Is that today? No, that's not today, okay? They really don't possess the land today. I mean, they think they do. They think they, they want to uh, keep it by force, right? This is talking about there's going to be peace, and you will see that later on too. No, there was going to be peace and there's something else there, okay, that today is not there. So this is not talking about what's going on today, okay, when the Jews are going back to the land. The Jews will go back to the land when they accept Messiah, and we will see this in a bit. And these are the words that the Lord spake concerning Israel and concerning Judah. Now, he's talking here about separately Israel and Judah. So in other words, we now have only Judah returning to the land. He's talking about Israel as well. Now the, the kingdom of Israel, the 10 tribes that belong to the Israel, okay, and Judah and Benjamin is separate. These 10 tribes are gone. We don't know where they are. They intermingled with the, the Gentiles, right? They became part of the Gentile nations. So it is very hard to find them. Therefore, these are symbolic for the believers, not for biological descendants because nobody can really trace back biologically who be belonged to Israel. Okay? Same thing with Judah. Judah intermingled so badly with the heathen in the past 2,000 years that it's very hard to say, oh, this person is really from the tribe of Judah, okay? Or the tribe of Benjamin. So, 
but some of them say, yeah, we know it, we know it, we can find this gene somewhere that traces us back. Probably most people in this world can trace a gene back to Abraham, okay? Or trace back a gene to, um, to Jacob, okay? Probably a lot of people. For thus says the Lord, we have heard a voice of trembling, of fear, and not of peace. See, here it comes. Fear, not of peace. There's not going to be any peace, people, until Jesus returns in Israel today. Okay? No, there's not going to be any peace. And this peace treaty that many talk about, it doesn't exist either. That's written in Daniel, the 70th week of Daniel. No, the guy who made a treaty is not a priest treaty. He made a, a covenant. It's not a treaty. It's a covenant. And that was Jesus. Okay, it's not a peace treaty. That's false interpretation. He is talking about here, there are not going to be any peace. There's going to be fear. Ask ye now and see whether a man... Um, what is it? Doth tra travail with child. Wherefore do, do I see every man with his hands on his loins as a woman in travail? And all faces are turned into paleness. Alas, for that day is great so that none is like it. Okay. Here he says it very good. None is like it. So it's a very specific day that cannot comp be compared to any other day. Okay? The trouble is specifically for that time. It is even the time of Jacob's trouble. But he shall be saved. But he shall be saved out of it. Who is he? The believers. And we see that again in Zechariah 14. Not all of Israel, okay? All of the believers of Israel. Even after this Jacob's trouble, there is still going to be people, many people, that will refuse to believe in Messiah and realize, wow, we missed Messiah, okay? Very few will recognize Messiah. For it shall come to pass in that day, says the Lord of hosts, that I will break his yoke from off thy neck and will burst thy bonds and strangers shall no more serve themselves to him. Okay. But they shall serve the Lord, their God and David, their king, whom I will raise up unto them. So here he is talking about a time when Messiah will be here. David the king. It's of course not real David. He is not going to be resurrected. It's David, the descendant of David, which is Messiah. And he will be the king. Okay? So that's when Messiah will be here. When will that be? That will be during the millennium to the second coming of Christ. That's when that will happen. But remember, people have to go through the wrath of God first. And that's why it is so terrible. Therefore, fear, you, fear thou not, O my servant Jacob, that the Lord neither be dismayed, or Israel, for lo, I will save thee from afar, and thy seed from the land of their captivity. And Jacob shall return and shall be in rest and be quiet and none shall take him, um, make him afraid. That is the seed of Jacob and the true seed of Jacob. And that's what Paul teaches as well. Is the believing descendants of Jacob and the believing and the adopted ones as well. Okay, so all believers, okay, for I'm with thee, says the Lord, to save thee, though I make a full end of all nations, whither I have scattered thee, yet I will not make a full end of thee, but I will correct thee in measure 
and will not leave thee altogether unpunished. For thus says the Lord, Thy bruise is incurable, that thy bruise is incurable, and thy wound is grievous. There is none to bleed thy case, that thou mayest be bound up. Thou hast no healing medicine. Okay, who can only heal them? Only Messiah, and that's just the bottom line. They're not going to be saved just because they're descendants, biological descendants of Jacob. They're saved because of Messiah and for them to say, hey, we need to follow Messiah. Okay, not all will do that. Okay. It says, why criest thou for thine affliction? Thy sorrow is incurable for the multitudes of thine iniquity because thy sins were increased. I have done these things into thee. Okay. So there's going to be punishment during this time. And this time is just before everything turns good because they will follow Messiah. Okay. This is why I look at this and I see that this is during the time of the wrath of God, not tribulation for the saints. That is totally different. And people confuse that because they have false assumptions about this word, specifically about this word, tribulation, great tribulation time. Again, that word great tribulation time can be found in Revelation 7. Okay. But it is not the time during the wrath of God. It's not after the time when Jesus comes and takes out his bride. All saints will have to go through tribulation. The tribulation that Jesus talks about. In where is it again? John, I don't remember where it is. John 13 or something. When Jesus says, in this world you will have tribulation. That's what Jesus talks about. Okay? Tribulation. Now, something very important. This right there is exactly the time of trouble. And a lot of people confuse this Jacob's trouble with Matthew 24. Okay. And let's go to Matthew 24. And I believe it is in, let me see, I don't have it down, 24. And I think it's in 20 maybe. Yeah, 21. It says, For then shall be gr great tribulation, and it's translated by King James, For then shall be great tribulation, such as was not since the beginning of the world to this time, nor ever shall be. Okay? Now, f many now believe that this refers to, Okay, to Jacob's trouble. And I can somewhat agree with that, but I don't agree with where this is placed in Matthew. Matthew is not, gen uh, it's not chronological. Why? Because Matthew didn't understand many things. Okay, Matthew, for instance, didn't understand the fact that there's 2,000 years between the destruction of the temple, which Jesus was talking about in Matthew 24, and his second coming. Matthew didn't know that. Because during Matthew's time, the disciples believed that Jesus would come during their lifetime. So therefore, Matthew made a connection between the destruction of the temple, and his second coming. So he thought that was all in one. Okay? That's not my assumption. That is what I know from history. Okay? Paul addressed that. He says, don't worry. Because they were, they were thinking Jesus already came. 
No, don't worry about that. Jesus has not come yet. And even Paul didn't know that it would take 2,000 years before he returns. Because that was their thinking in those days. And we need to understand that. Because Matthew obviously did not make that connection. Now Luke and Mark were more methodical in their writing down what Jesus said. Okay? And it's more obvious that the description that in the beginning of Matthew 24 is about the destruction of the temple. So when he then says, what was it again? For then shall be great tribulation such as was not since the beginning of the world to this time, nor ever shall be. People make automatically a reference to Daniel 12, where almost the same words are used. And then they make the same mistake as uh, um, Matthew did and think that this is the time at the end. Okay? At the end. Which it is. This verse fits with the end. What Daniel says in Daniel 12, that is the end. That is the destruction. That is God's wrath when um, the Michael, uh, the angel will come the, the angel, uh, archangel Michael will come and destroy the enemies okay, of God on this earth, the whole system. That is okay. That's correct. Okay. That is correct. So we can put that in as the end, but this is not, we cannot then say, oh, the beginning of Matthew is about the end. See, because Matthew plays this verse in the wrong order, we cannot assume that this is part or that the first part of Matthew is about the end. Okay? The beginning of Matthew all the way to 21. Okay? But pray ye that your flight be not in the winter, neither on the Sabbath. That is all about the destruction of the temple. Okay? Still all about the destruction of the temple. Read this little booklet about the destruction of Jerusalem. Um, I will put it on the description box. The description that Josephus um, made about the destruction and how terrible that time was. That fits exactly the description until 20, okay? That Jesus said, when you see these signs of what I just told you, you need to flee into the mountains because it will be a horrible time. Now, this time of the destruction of the temple, okay, was described by Jeremiah in Jeremiah 19. And many people think that this description of, of Jeremiah 19, okay, is, and we can go there right now, Jeremiah 19 is about Jacob's trouble, but it's not about Jacob's trouble, okay? How do I know? I want you to read Jeremiah because it's kind of long, okay? And I want you to read it. But what caught my attention, why I think this is not about Jacob's trouble. It's about great tribulation and trouble and hardship. If you read that, you know it is. Well, somebody is eating, they're, they're eating their children, their, their sons and daughters. In Narnia says, and I will cause them to eat the flesh of their sons and their flesh of their daughters. And they shall eat every one of the flesh of his friend in siege and straightness where with their enemies um, and they had seek their lives shall uh, strain strained them in other words they were under siege okay and because they were under siege they were locked up and they didn't have food 
And some of them even eat, ate grass. But some of them even ate... Ooh, there's a big buck out there. Sorry. <laughs> and a little bucky. Big buck and a little buck. Anyways, sorry I got distracted. But anyways, they ate... And Josephus described that. Okay? It was such a horrible time that a mother ate her child. This is what Jeremiah is talking about here. Okay, So I know historically this applies to exactly what Matthew is describing in Matthew 24 until 20. Okay? See, you have to do the study. You have to see, okay, where does this fit? You can't just run after all these people that have opinions about Jacob's trouble and, and blah, 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 and blah, blah, blah about it. You have to put it in the right perspective. Okay? So all the way to 20 is when they described the fall of Jerusalem and the temple. The abomination of desolation that happened in 70 AD. Read that booklet, people. It's free. It's free. Read it. It's free. It's also on my Facebook uh, group, Great Deceptions of the End Times. It's free. Read it. It's small. And he did a good job summarizing Josephus. What he wrote in a lengthy whatever thing. But you need to understand historical background. So you know, ah, somebody's not coming and says, oh, um, Jeremiah 19 is Jacob's trouble. No, there's only one Jacob's trouble in Jeremiah, and that is Jeremiah 30. Was it 30? Yes. 37 is where you have that name. And when you describe, when he describes that era, it is really drawing the wrath of God. Okay. Because that is when Jerusalem will be attacked and it will be rubble. If you read everything in Jeremiah 30, you will read it. You will read in there that Jerusalem will be destroyed. And on top of the rubble will come a new city, a new Jerusalem, which Jesus is building right now. Okay? So there will be, everything will be rubble. When will that happen? That will happen during that last uh, battle of Armageddon, which you can find in the wrath of God, whether the wrath of God is described in Revelation 16. That's where you find about Armageddon. So you have to do a lengthy study, and you have to, do, you have to know quite a lot about the Bible. You cannot just follow these people that are misleading you constantly because i've been hearing this jacob's trouble lately and i'm thinking where in the world do you put that okay where is it written where is even that name written well it is only written in jeremiah 30 and when you place that yes it is during the wrath of god until the end of the wrath of god into christ's reign so obviously, it's talking about Christ's reign. So can we fit that in Matthew, the first part? No, because Matthew, the first part, all the way to uh, 20, is about the destruction of the temple. And Matthew really, Matthew really didn't know that there is now a 2,000-year span between the destruction of the temple and the second coming. There is going to be great tribulation in between for the saints. Great tribulation. Not just seven years, people. 2,000 years of tribulation. So, again, let's go to the Matthew 20, uh, 24, 21. For then shall be great tribulation such as was not since the beginning of the world to this time nor ever shall be. And I believe this verse is talking about now during the time the sun goes dark, which he then describes in 29. Immediately after the tribulation of those days, 
the sun shall be darkened, and the moon shall not give its light, and the stars shall fall from heaven, and the powers of heaven shall be shaken. That is the wrath of God in a nutshell, which we see in Revelation 6, 12 through 17. Okay? Nutshell. And then it is, uh, the, the wrath of God is descri described in Revelation 8 through 11 and chapter 16. That's the same. You, that's overlapping with this verse. Okay? That's when we have Jacob's trouble as well. So Matthew is out of order. Okay? But what comes before the wrath, before the sun going down? Great tribulation. Is that Jacob's trouble? No. It's great tribulation for the saints. Okay? It's great tribulation for the saints. I hope that has helped and I hope I did it systematically. Because I know my old video was not systematically. You can, of course, also go to Daniel now. Okay? Because Daniel tells you the same words that Matthew used, okay, Matthew, uh, Daniel 12, that's where you can find the same words, okay, it says, and there shall, and that's in verse, in verse um, one, and at the time shall Michael stand up the great prince, which standeth for the children of thy people, he is the captain of the arm of an army, right, and there shall be a time of trouble such as never was since there was a nation, even to that same time. And at that time, thy people shall be delivered. Every one, one, every one that shall be found written in the book. Okay? Not everyone. Don't stop there. But everyone who shall be found written in the book. Those are only the believers, only the believers in Messiah. Not everybody, not every Jew is going to be uh, uh, saved. Only the ones that are in the book of life. That's what that book is, the book of life. Okay? So you have to put everything together, people. You cannot stop someplace and, and just pick little verses out and assume this and assume that. Do an in-depth study, okay? A lot of people don't even want to watch my videos because, oh, she's a false prophet or a false teacher. You know what? If you would read the verses that I give you on your own, maybe you could put these things together. Of course, it's a lengthy study. But you have to start someplace and you have to ask questions. And most of all, you have to let the Holy Spirit guide you. So obviously this right here, Daniel 12, is at the end. Why? Because Daniel 11 is a chronological account of the history from the human history from the time of Daniel. Okay? Gives you the account when the temple was destroyed. I have done that study all the way to um to the end so yeah all the way to the end the, the the man of sin you can see where the man of sin is mentioned there in verse 36 the destruction of the temple is in 31 okay it's a whole history and then it ends up with the, with the wrath of god Okay, which is Michael. And then he says, Many of them that sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake some uh, to everlasting life, some to shame and everlasting contempt. That's the end. In a nutshell. In a nutshell. It's the end in a nutshell. But many times we have nutshells and we have to fill them. We have to pull in more information. So this is at the end. So what Matthew is talking about in Matthew 24, 21 is the end. But I believe he didn't place it correctly because it should be really after 29. After the sun goes dark, that's where it should be placed. 
Did he do it because he didn't know? Did he do it purposely? Because God sometimes, of course, or always doesn't want people to really unbelievers to know what's going on and he only wants people to be guided by the Holy Spirit so he's really hiding the truth because he doesn't want the unbelievers to understand things and he wants the unbelievers to be deceived maybe people that are deceived they will be deceived there's nothing we can do and remember the more they're deceived the more they believe the lies God shuts their eyes as well we see that with Pharaoh. Pharaoh just resisted and resisted God and couldn't see it anymore at the end. God shuts his eyes. I don't think people's eyes will be shut from the beginning. People's eyes will be shut when they keep resisting the Holy Spirit and they keep listening to lies and they don't go to the Bible and do the study that I just did. That's when you get blinded. I know it for myself. I used to follow these false teachers, dispensational listen, and I didn't read what's there. Maybe I didn't have the Holy Spirit. And finally I said, you know what? This is it. I need to go to the Holy Spirit and let him guide me or her, whatever it is. Okay. And I know somebody's going to pick up on that and say, what? Did you say the Holy Spirit is a he, she? We don't know. Okay. Holy Spirit is not tied to human body, to gender, or sexuality, whatever it is, gender or sexuality, the biological one, okay? It's, it's different. It's different in heaven. But there are still male and female traits, even in heaven. God is male and female in itself, because he has male and female traits understand that that's why he made them male and female hello I don't want to go there I shouldn't be going there because that goes into different <sighs> what rabbit hole anyways I'm coming to an end let the Holy Spirit guide you always and okay if you want to know more about that topic read my book the mystery of Adam because that does an in-depth study about the creation of humankind.